Hey guys, I'm Heather Demetrius. I'm a young adult author. I'm also a writing coach and a certified meditation teacher. So today I'm here to talk to you about how you can use mindfulness and meditation practices to help you with your writing on pretty much every level. So to help you with your craft, to help you with your process, and to also help you as you navigate the challenges of the writer's life. Because as you know, we deal with a ton of issues like self-doubt, our inner critics, jealousy, uncertainty, fear, so many things. And for me and for the people that I work with, I have found that meditation and mindfulness are huge helps in all of these areas. So the way that I came to meditation was because I was basically having a nervous breakdown. I was super creatively blocked with a couple of projects. Um, as somebody who suffers from major depression, that block was making it worse. Major stress, lots of anxiety, and I didn't know what to do. And part of it was that I was starting to hustle for my worth. As a published author, and even before I was a published author, there's so much pressure to build a brand, to get followers, to have this huge social media presence. And then once you get published, you start worrying about your numbers. You start worrying about your book sales and your publisher and what they think of you. And you see what other writers are doing and all that comparison stuff comes in. And suddenly, it's not about the writing anymore. It's not about loving books. It's not about all the things that brought you to this art in the first place. And it gets really confusing really fast. So I knew that I needed to do something pretty drastic to shake things up. Now, I had meditated before, but not with any degree of seriousness. I had traveled in many places around the world. I'm originally from California, so there's a lot of people that do that kind of stuff there. So I had dabbled a bit in meditation, but I was pretty sure it wasn't for me. I don't know about you guys, but my mind runs like a thousand miles a minute. And so for me to sit down, it just felt like oh, happening in my head all the time. And so it was a kind of torture. And so I just thought, no, no, this isn't for me. But I had started to hear so many things about meditation, all the different benefits of meditation for mental health, for your physical health, for overall well-being. And so I felt like it was time to give it a try again. So I started meditating and I was lucky because at the time I was living in Brooklyn. So I had meditation studios that I could go to and really great teachers. And I went to just a secular meditation studio and I learned how to meditate, basic mindfulness meditation. And my teachers, the really big thing they taught me was that the goal of meditation is not to just sit down and shut everything off. Your mind isn't going to go completely blank and you're also not going to like achieve enlightenment when you sit down. I mean, maybe some of you at some point, right? But what I learned was that meditation is simply about giving yourself the opportunity, which we never give ourselves, to be fully grounded in the present and to just do one thing, which is to sit and follow your breath. And as thoughts come in, your mind is la 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 la, you've got all these thoughts, they come in, and then what you do is you observe them. So you really start to get to know your mind better, which as a writer, of course, is a huge benefit. So I found that meditation wasn't just helping me in terms of the stress that I was experiencing, but it became a huge creative tool. What I learned was that if I sat down and meditated before I wrote that day, I had way more flow, I was much more focused, and much more efficient. I was writing more words, I was able to connect dots faster, so like if I had a, like a tangle in my plot, it was so much easier to kind of figure that out, and it's because I'd been meditating. Because, as I later learned, as I got more into meditation and learning about the neuroscience of meditation, what your brain does when you're meditating is the same thing it does when it's in creative flow. So essentially, when you're meditating, you are training in flow. So even if you sat for 20 minutes a day and those 20 minutes were super boring to you, okay, you're going to have more flow and more focus and you're going to be a better writer. So to me, that's a very small price to pay, right? Athletes, they all have to do their training. So this is a way that we can train, which is off the page, off the screen, out of the chair, and focusing on 
our internal lives, on our bodies, getting grounded in the present. So it was a huge benefit to me. And as soon as I realized that, I got more and more serious about meditation. And now I teach meditation to my students, to my clients. Um, I have a blog, The Lotus and Pen, where I talk about all the different ways that you can bring meditation and mindfulness into your creative life. So different exercises, guided meditations, I'm on Insight Timer. So I've been working really hard to bring this practice to our community of writers because it's such a huge help. And again, it's not just for you on the writing and craft level, but it's also you on the artist level. Because if you have a tool that, that works for you, that you can engage in, when you are feeling your inner critic rise up and tell you that you're the worst writer in the world, or when you start to feel that comparison happening and you get on Twitter and you see all these other writers and what their, you know, their books are selling and this is happening and that's happening and you start to feel really crappy about yourself, or when you feel overwhelmed by the sheer amount of uncertainty in this life as an artist, you have a tool to help you deal with that so that that overwhelm doesn't take over your creative life and give you a block so that you can't even do this thing that you love to do. So that's sort of why meditation and mindfulness is so incredibly helpful. And again, I didn't think that I could do it. And when you have a little bit of instruction and some guidance, it's so much easier and it's definitely worth a shot. Now, mindfulness is part of the meditation practice, but mindfulness is not meditation. So meditation is, you know, you sit in a chair or if you want to be fancy, you can have a cushion, right? Sit down, I close my eyes, I follow my breath for 20 minutes. That is meditation. Now, there are many different kinds of meditation. So that's just your basic mindfulness meditation. Mindfulness is in your daily life, right? You are just present. You take particular moments to be more present. So an example I like to give to people is, let's say you have to wash the dishes, okay? And normally when you wash the dishes, maybe you're listening to a podcast or you're, you know, going through your to-do list in your head or you're on the phone with somebody, you're multitasking, right? But if you're working in mindfulness, you would make the conscious choice to just wash the dishes, now, it seems boring, it seems less efficient, but what you're doing is you're training yourself to be in the present and to pay attention. So suddenly you notice, oh, this lovely smell from the dish soap, and you hear the sound that the water makes as it falls onto the plates, and you feel the warm water on your skin, and maybe something comes up with that for you emotionally or whatever, right? So you're having this full sensory experience of washing the dishes. Now I guarantee you, the next time you sit down to write, you might not write about a character who's washing the dishes. If you did, it would be a great scene, but you are spending time in your non-writing life paying attention so that when you get to the page, you're able to work on that level of detail and with that level of authenticity and sensory experience. And that's just for physical things or setting. But if you start to think about paying attention to your emotional life, one thing I've noticed is that meditation has made me more emotionally intelligent because I'm just more present all the time. And when I feel emotions, I really let myself feel them. And so then when I sit down and I work on a character, I'm able to get into her skin a lot better because I'm in my own skin. I'm not in 5,000 other places and watching TV all the time. I mean, I like to watch TV, right? But I'm actually taking time in my daily life to train in the art of paying attention, right? And any poet will tell you how essential that is. So that's part of why mindfulness is so useful. And there's a lot of tools that you can use, even just in your daily life, to have more of those. So there's a teacher, Tara Brock, who talks about having a sacred pause, which is simply throughout the day, take a moment to just close your eyes, or you don't have to close your eyes, but it's nice, and just breathe for one minute. Just breathe. Just check in with your body, see how you're feeling, listen to the sounds around you. Just be in that moment, not doing anything else. 
Another thing is what's called 4812 breathing. So if you start to feel a little bit overwhelmed or your mind is just going fast, 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 or you're writing and you feel totally stuck on something, you can do this breathing technique, which is basically you breathe in for four, hold for eight, breathe out with your mouth through 12. So in through your nose for four, hold for eight, out for 12. And I usually do that 10 repetitions, right? So if you do it for about three minutes, it actually physically relaxes you. It does things to your nervous system. And so you actually are giving yourself kind of like a reset. So if you experience a lot of anxiety or feelings of overwhelm, or you just feel like your brain is super foggy, just do that. Another thing is to meditate for even just five minutes before you sit down to write or take a break in between your writing sessions and meditate and then write again. And you can just set a timer for five minutes, close your eyes, follow your breath. And that really centers and focuses you. It creates a ritual around your writing, which is really, really helpful. So a couple things just to keep in mind that meditation and mindfulness help with specifically for your writing is that it will help with creative blocks. It definitely helps with emotional distress of any kind, right? And not just in the moment, but if you are meditating on the regular every day for about 20 minutes, you will find that your mental health will improve. It's different for everybody, but I always tell people, you know, give it a real shot. Give it a month. Give it a couple months. See how your life changes before you started these practices and after every level of your life, not just your creative life. And you'll definitely see a big help with that. You'll find that you're more connected to people, that you really just show up more when you're on the page and you're writing or when you're with other people. Um, Natalie Goldman says in her um her book, Writing Down the Bones, she talks about how um, when you're revising, a, a good way of looking at it is to say, where am I not present? And not like you, the writer, because you, you, know, you don't want to be too present because then you're distracting the reader from the book. But where did you not show up on the page? Where were you not focused as you were writing? right? Where were you not present? You were thinking about five other things and you weren't really in that scene. You weren't really connected to those characters. So these are all different ways that you can look at how mindfulness and meditation can help you with your writing. So I have a meditation starter kit for writers that includes um, a posture clinic and it gives kind of the 411 on everything about how to start this whole meditation practice along with guided meditations, and a lot of writing exercises and journaling exercises and creative exercises to take this practice and go deeper and to really see, is this for you? And what I tell people is, honestly, just try it, give it a real try, and see if it's something that's useful to you. I think the more connected and present we are as writers, the better the work is and the more we have to offer to our readers and by extension, the world. So if you have any questions about meditation, about mindfulness and writing, please feel free to reach out to me. So you can just go to my website, heatherdemetrius.com and my blog is on there as well, but if you just go separately to the blog, it's thelotusandpen.com. And like I said, I blog a lot, talk a lot about mindfulness, meditation, craft. I do guided meditations. I'm on Insight Timer. So there's a lot of resources out there for you in terms of how to get integrated with this practice. You don't need to go to a fancy meditation studio. You don't even need to buy a cushion. You can do it in a chair. You don't have to spend a lot of money. So it's really just about showing up for your life because you have this one life, so you want to show up for it, right? So thank you so much for your time, and good luck with all of your projects, all of your writing, all of your dreaming and brainstorming, and everything that you're doing with your writing career. It's a tough road, but the more that we can help each other with practices like this, the better it will be for all of us. So take care. Bye.